So people all throughout history have claimed to be blessed with supernatural powers. The kings and queens of Europe were thought to be of divine blood, and the pharaohs of ancient Egypt claimed to be reincarnations of the gods. And even today, many claim to have otherworldly gifts. There are people out there who believe they can talk to the dead, and there are psychics that say they can use telepathy to influence the world around them. However, none among them is more famous than Yuri Geller. The man who gained international fame for being able to bend metal spoons with his mind and stop watches just by looking at them. A man who said that he wasn't using sleight of hand or magic, but instead claimed that he had supernatural powers. What I do is um, telepathy, and that is, as everybody knows, is receiving thoughts and uh, passing, passing thoughts. And believe it or not, to the world, he seems like the real deal. A man capable of performing feats of supernatural wonder. Very soon, the metal will become soft. See, it's becoming very soft. My mind can melt the metal down. But despite being the most famous psychic of all time, Yuri Geller's rise to stardom is marred by accusations of fraud, deceit, and dishonesty. This is the dark story of Yuri Geller and his rise to fame, and how one man worked tirelessly to expose his secrets. My name's Oscar Owen, and let's get started. Chapter 1, Setting the Stage So, Geller was born on the 20th of December 1946 in Tel Aviv, Israel. His origins were already a clue as the kind of man he would later become. Geller claims to be descended from the legendary Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis. Now, there's no way of proving this claim, but his mother was called Margaret Freud, and considering that Geller is of Austrian Jewish heritage, it's not impossible that this is true. However, you'll soon understand why it might be hard for someone to believe a man like Geller when he makes such a claim. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, so let's go back to his childhood. At the age of 10, his parents divorced. He moved to Cyprus and helped his new stepfather run a hotel on the island that allegedly served as a front for Mossad, the Israeli National Security Agency. When he turned 18, Geller served in Israel's paratrooper regiment and fought in the famous Six Day War where he suffered an injury. Between 1968 and 1969, he worked as a male model in a nightclub. It was during these shifts that Geller started to make a name for himself. He'd perform feats of wonder to anyone that would give him the time. The tricks would amaze onlookers, and some became certain that he did indeed possess some kind of supernatural gift. Watch him here as he apparently bends a spoon with his mind on live television. Soon, the metal will become soft. You see, it's becoming very soft. And you can touch it, it's soft. Look, see? What, what happened is my mind can melt the metal down. Within a couple of years, Geller was known across Israel as the man with the psychic gift. He could bend metal with his mind and guess what you were thinking from the other side of the room. Here is a good example of that. He went on a talk show and asked the host to draw something whilst he stood on the other side of the room. Yuri wants me to draw something on a pad and I have to transmit it to him in my okay. mind. I'm not gonna look. I don't want anybody to see this. Try to transmit it to me. This have? is what I got. I got it! I did! I got it! So Gela was kicking up a storm in Israel, and talk of his powers became so widespread that they caught the attention of an unlikely onlooker. In 1971, Gela met Andrea Purovich, a parapsychological researcher from America. Andrea took a keen interest in Geller and invited him to the United States to run some experiments. Both were determined to prove that the young Israeli psychic powers were true. And the results of the tests were bizarre to say the least. First of all, Andrea was the only one in attendance when the experiments were carried out. So everything he says can only be verified by him or Geller. So that's not exactly airtight from the start, but Andrea's claims then become even more interesting, to put it mildly. Here are some of the things that Andrea says with 100% certainty that Geller can do. Teleport a dog between walls, turn base metal into gold, 
communicate with extraterrestrial supercomputers, and commune with dead spirits. If that wasn't enough, then Geller was also apparently sent to Earth by aliens located 53,000 light years away. And for those of you that are interested, that's half the diameter of the Milky Way galaxy. And he also said that Geller was the chosen savior of humanity. But Andrea wasn't the only one interested in Geller. The Central Intelligence Agency, or CIA, conducted experiments on the alleged psychic to test his powers. And you'll be shocked to hear that when the tests were all done, the researchers wrote that Geller demonstrated his paranormal perceptual ability in a convincing and unambiguous manner. So Geller was on top form. The entire United States had come down with a case of Geller fever. And by 1973, he was appearing on TV shows across the country to display his powers. Ladies and gentlemen, live on our stage, Uri Geller. Then, Geller received an invitation from the one and only Johnny Carson to join him on The Tonight Show. Uh, and we hope we're going to see some uh, rather astounding things tonight. Would you welcome, please, Uri Geller. A tremendous honour that very few would dare to refuse. Little did Geller know he was actually walking right into a trap. Chapter 2, Now You See Me. James Randi was the complete polar opposite of Geller in basically every way. He was a magician and a master at performing mind-bending feats of magic on stage. And by 1973, Randi had appeared on several television shows to show off his sleight of hand magic tricks. Ladies and gentlemen, the card that most of you chose is the square. Randi was your man if you wanted a foremost expert on anything concerning magical performances. However, Randi's stunts weren't what made him so famous, but rather his reputation as a rational skeptic who confronted and exposed claims of people who said they were psychic. What are you going to do, James? I'm going to move a pencil for you with just psychic, just psychic powers. Very well. Now, you saw James' demonstration from backstage. Yes, I do. And do you accept that as a demonstration of psychic power, or do you believe that he used trickery? I think that Mr. Heydrich is merely to accomplish this effect, blowing on both the page and on the pencil. Randy made a point to never hide the fact that he relied on deception to perform his tricks. In fact, he once demonstrated how to perform a simple magic trick before an audience at the University of Buffalo to dispel the myth of psychic abilities, and a professor shouted out that he was a fraud because he actually was using supernatural powers to trick the audience into believing that anyone could do it. So Randy and Geller were on the opposite ends of the spectrum. One hated being labelled as a trickster, the other wore it with a badge of pride. One claimed to be gifted with psychic powers, the other had to prove that he wasn't. And as such, the two made natural rivals. It therefore comes as no surprise to hear that when Randy turned on his television and saw Yuri Geller appear on screen, he knew that he had a new target in his sight. Randy found in Johnny Carson a close ally, because Carson was known for his stage presence and his lightning quick wit, and Carson even performed magic a few times on stage during his youth. So he was familiar with the kind of effects that a psychic would use to deceive his audience. Before Carson invited Geller onto his show, Randy advised him to make sure that he didn't allow Geller's staff to bring any of his own equipment. So Carlson sent a list of 40 questions to Geller, preparing him for the interview. But when Geller arrived on set to a cheering audience, his eyes widened in shock upon spotting aluminium cans and props laid out on the table. Carlson kept his cool and politely asked Geller to reproduce a feat of supernatural wonder he'd performed so many times before. We have a variety of objects sitting here, and I'd like you to take your own pace when you feel like you want to try anything. Right. Do you want to try that particular experiment first? When I'll feel free. When you okay. Sure. All he needed to do was divine which aluminium can contained water without touching any of them. After much floundering and a few excuses, Geller couldn't pull off the stunt. He claimed he wasn't feeling strong and that Carlson was putting pressure on him to perform. Usually, of course, I don't walk into an, an, an audience and they tell me, here, we laid down 20 cans, find it. Uri was telling me, you, you, you don't feel, what, strong tonight? I don't Is feel that... strong. The audience wasn't convinced. After the show, Randy continued to pile the pressure on the young psychic. Geller's iconic display of supernatural power, where he would bend a spoon with his mind, came under scrutiny. 
You can watch the clip online or I can just show you now how it's done. All you need is a little sleight of hand. I've got a fork here and as you can see this is a solid fork and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fork and I'm going to focus my energy on it. And you're going to see it start to bend and then it breaks just like that. To do this effect you take a normal fork and then you need to put a pre-bend in it before you perform the trick. Now lots of magicians do this by getting a machine and cutting a very thin line in the fork or you can simply bend the fork back and forwards as shown. So now the fork has been weakened right in the middle and it means when you apply a little bit of pressure, you can start to make it bend. And if you shake it hard enough, you can also break the fork itself like that. Now I'm not saying that this is necessarily how Yuri Geller did his effect, but the point here is the same effect can be achieved through using sleight of hand. Chapter three for my next trick. Even though Randy has demonstrated that some of Geller's effects can be achieved through sleight of hand, we should not automatically assume that Randy was entirely correct. And this is because it's essential to consider other aspects of Geller's life and the experiences that have surrounded him. Because magicians can duplicate some of these things with trickery does not mean that, that genuine psychics do it with trickery. So the Johnny Carson show is a really good example of where Geller was unable to demonstrate his powers. However, there are countless other televised demonstrations where Geller has seemingly done the impossible. Perhaps the most famous is where he's able to duplicate drawings remarkably well, despite not having any prior knowledge of that drawing. I got it! And we cannot forget that the CIA confirmed that he demonstrated his paranormal activity in a convincing and unambiguous manner. If Geller was merely an illusionist, then why would such an influential organisation with substantial resources place their trust in him? Additionally, Geller's involvement in the search for natural resources such as oil raises further questions. Apparently, a prominent oil exploration company faced challenges when identifying promising drilling locations and so turned to Geller as a last resort for assistance. And utilising his psychic powers, Geller provided insights into the locations of untapped oil reserves. And the results of Geller's involvement were reportedly striking. The drilling operations, based on his recommendations, led to the discovery of significant oil deposits in previously unexplored areas. And this success caught the attention of the entire oil industry and sparked further interest in Geller's alleged abilities. Companies with billions of dollars at stake entrusted Geller with providing insights into their drilling decisions, suggesting that they perceived his involvement as a potential advantage. So if his talents were purely based on sleight of hand, why would these companies with vast financial investments at stake seek his assistance? Conclusion So then, whilst it's plausible to explain some of Geller's feats as products of illusion or sleight of hand, the involvement of the CIA and billion dollar oil companies suggests that there may be more to his abilities than meets the eye. The fact that high profile entities have sought Geller's assistance implies a level of trust in his beliefs and his capabilities. Therefore, this does raise the intriguing possibility that Geller does possess an extraordinary power that transcends conventional sleight of hand explanations. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, but one thing is for sure, Geller's story is pretty fascinating. <laughs>